one of the the um, other things that um, I have to say to Scotland about uh, are the enormous amount of things that I found out about Scotland and why, you know, why that we are um, strategic. Uh, and uh, of course we are. Of course we are. And uh, actually the Navy have been drug running since 1970. Nothing we could do about it, you know. My father and mother were friendly with uh, Sir David McNee and he was a chief constable um, down Path Lane Way uh, in Dumbartonshire and uh, according to him there was absolutely nothing he could do about it because that was under the jurisdiction of the um, Navy police um, but they're still doing it today and the fishermen know all about it mm -hmm. and, and we know all about global warming you know because all the scientists have told us what's happening in the deep. Um, and they've also said to Boris, straight to Boris, um, and the fishing is now yours, so what are you going to do? Are you going to stop the trawling, you know? But as I've already explained to the fishermen, uh, your best bet is with Scotland where um, we're trying hard to help you. you the, the politicians, everybody couldn't be working hard enough to try and help you. So that's what I'm thinking of. And the other thing is, to, um, as soon as everything's over, I'm going to be up Peterhead, Aberdeen, Orkney and Shetland. Um, oh, and I've written poems as many times about what's going to happen when and later on. You know, look at the central belt. Ghosts and flaming empties. And then up north, it's the same in Peterhead and I remember because I I I, I came from up there and, and I was a um, a nurse for the National Dock Labour Board and that's was the last one that she cleared out and she was afraid to do it because it was really strong and um, she cleared out everybody else and the steel etc um, and the coal and um, everything sacrificed to get us into Europe. And then they decide about Brexit and the percentage that we had to decide on that. And uh, when we decided we didn't want to come out then, well, we'd paid the sacrifice and we knew everything. But as I say, if I had to say to Scotland exactly what we own, what we don't own anymore, um, it's very, very difficult. Um, it's also difficult because um, the young people don't really know the history that's being taught in schools, you know, and education, that's very, very important. Of course it is, you know. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, when when they say to us, you know, um, education and blah, 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 oh, 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 don't get me started. Because the thing is, they're dunces. And that's because the man who actually invented university education where the arts and everything else was taught. He was a Scot and he was brought over here by, well, he, he was actually born in Duns. Um, and the, there were other Cistercian monks there and that's where the riding comes from. So that's in the time of St. David. So um, the other thing is computers today um, and they, they say that we don't know anything, you know, well, I'm afraid there was a man called Napier. Um, what did he invent? Was it in logarithms? <laughs> and that was a starter. So when Boris changes everything and they uh, will lose the Erasmus and he's calling it something else. The other thing is, as far as science is concerned, um, according to Hawking, um, you know, the technology is going to uh, kill us all or whatever. Oh, you know, he's going to have to give me a break because as clever as he was and he discovered about the black hole um, and the positive and the negative and in the middle is something inert um, and he discovered that it actually was a force called a quark. Um, but although we understand that, our cleverness 
It's God's foolishness. Now I learned that at my mother's knee, which I'm sure all of you have done as well. So as I say, I've got to keep going and uh, I've got to try and explain everything. Now the islands and the lands um, and the queens, um, uh, Mary de Guise, she brought over um, so many different hardy plants, etc. And Alan, if you're listening to this and about China, let's, let's speak to China. You know, we're no going to point out to them, like, the, you know, the person that lives in a greenhouse, you know, don't start throwing stones at everybody. But it's not to say that we're not going to be dealing with anybody. And you, you, you can't be um, interfering. And it, these things are not up to us. So as far as I'm concerned, we could be doing business there, you know, and I did write to you about it. Um, but anyway, next uh, thing I want to say is that, uh, you know, the uh, gardens have got all of the apples, etc., that are good for Scotland. And there's loads and loads of it. Also, there's another uh, website where, if you want a wee bit of land, you know, but as for the landed gentry, if they're for Scotland, if they've had it in the city and they've had enough of it and they were born up here and they're up here and they've got, you know, so we've got all of this produce there and agriculture. And now he's threatening, to, we're doing business with Australia, etc. Et um, so I say to these people, that's okay. You know, because uh, you care. But why should the world eat the best? And what's happening to the poor? And, and it's happened to the poor pensioners. But this was a gift that we got with the pandemic. That the elderly got things delivered to them. And, and I noticed that um, when I was ordering things, and I ordered the Scottish things, it's then I realised that, uh, you know, they don't stock it. And as well as um, the um, people like uh, Mr. Amazon, oh, 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 um, and all of that, he's not as bad as the ones that are big, big, and the inks, etc. And I didn't want to be a nurse, wanted to be a police officer. And the, the women say, please, um, she wanted me. And I was refused because we knew McNee, right? I didn't really realise that, but my cousin, I think he maybe have realised it. But anyway, um, she asked if I would take a temporary job because I knew Julie Allen was opening up and I had given him my notice. And uh, I went to work for R.S. McCall. And I, I was in the habit of reading things like the, the um, <clears throat> Financial Times, etc. And I, I passed my time with that. I um, was working as a comptometer operator and I found out what, what happened. So, you know, throughout the years, um, shipbuilding, um, there was a, after the war, they never replenished everything, you know, um, and they, then Reagan and Thatcher thought, oh, they'll kill three birds with one stone. So stuff was getting sent from abroad etc. And talk about the downfall. Talk about the downfall. I used to be dressed in the best and we lived in Possil and um, next thing came all the cheap jack stuff from uh, abroad etc. But this is our chance and Covid is in again and all the grief and I'm looking to help everybody. That, that's, that's it. I'm just one person but everybody is there to help. And as soon as actually Parliament knows about that, the better. And as soon as you and everybody gets to know each other and realises we all need each other and we need the refugees, etc. So, anyway, um, there's, there's more, you know, Highlands and Islands and the Summer Isles and, and the Stamps. And then... Uh, Amazon, you know, and the books. Um, 
you do know that uh, um, Waterstones and um, Barnes and Noble and they're being run by a special person and uh, he actually was funded and I looked it up and it's laundered money from from Russia. Russia and China are everywhere and the um, the forest, the Chinese and the Russians have managed to get past everybody and the big conglomerates, Pepsi Cola, Inc, etc. We don't even play my own porridge, that's how bad it is. But uh, they're using all these products and this is what we have been fed with and I'm saying just turn it all around. Use the internet and just stay calm and and everybody just calm down and realise before you start shouting at each other, etc. Which is healthy, well, that's it. You know, we need everybody, we need Tories, we need Labour, etc. But, you know, Labour, forget about it in Scotland right now. And Tories, well, you can't say that about every Tory because there were people like uh, Alec Buchanan-Smith and they, when Thatcher wanted him to be um, he refused. Younger took it over then, but you know. Um, so, you know, we need all opinions. And that's not my job to tell anybody you do that. Neither am I making any money. I'm spending me. Um, but and what did I do with trust the Lord in this one? So, um, that's, uh, that's not me finished. The landed gentry are going to have to make up their mind what they want because I even looked up their growth treaty and look at the state of me. You know, I'm 78, okay, um, <clears throat> and uh, I've got difficulties, but I don't care. I'll be at the board and, and I'll say to the ones up here, if you're not going to work with the people <clears throat> and give them a bit of land and help them, you know, and, and Joanna Mumley, she knows that uh, with all the ordnance that they've dumped everywhere, when they're putting in these uh, wind things, um, they're just blowing blowing them up. You know, but the Navy have got things that you just attach to it, and it's just like a wee sort of, uh, squid or something, and there's there's no... And that means that the marine... And we've not got whales and dolphins lying all over the flaming place. Um, and, of course, Boris is in charge of the Navy. And and now he wants a flagship. Oh well. As far as the Republican bit goes, and Her Majesty, etc. I've already posted and I've said, well, well, if that's what you want to discuss, on you go. But I'm in front of the Queen and all the family as well. And that's my job. It's I think it's these clan chat and standard bears for the Crown. And that means that you don't get past me, eh? And uh, I'll be at the border if it's, if it's only one of us left. Um, and I've, I've made up my mind about that. So I don't see why God shouldn't spare me. I'm, I've got talent. I've got gifts and skills. But so have all of you. And so have all the Broken Biscuits and the Broken Biscuits. They've got them as well. You know, as soon as they get that bit of strength from a friend. And that's all I'm trying to be. A friend. A friend for all the world. And uh, to be a good nurse and take away fear. And you know that they've got us just like flaming gamblers. Just, you know, and taking us into wars. And it's the same with uh, Bush Jr. and uh, Tony Blair. Um, and they carry on. And there's a, a man called Parker, Nosy Parker. You know, they actually hung him because it's actually a mental illness that you want to fill up your lives with all the things that you... It's no wonder that the heir to the throne um, has got a collection of toilet seats because, you know, what maybe do you want to know about the royal family? You want to go and work a lot of you, eh? But you'll not get past me and that's it. So, am I getting aggressive? I think so, maybe, you know. Um, so, 
the guy that sold out Gaunt, etc. R.S. McCall's, Mingus. We've got no independent people up here anymore. We've got no co-op, we've got no nothing. Except we held on to that uh, um, Harris Tweed. Okay, so there's something else that I've got my eye on. And it's a case of uh, there's no money because of A-listed buildings, etc. You know, oh, and there's plenty of, of really good stuff now that's selling. Woo! You want to see the prices of the stuff. They're doing it an amalgamation with the Orkneys and Shetlands, etc. And, and that's great. But I want a showcase for um, all the produce of Scotland. And I, I, I want this Hawker Harvesters, which is prisoners and the refugees and they've all got skills, etc. Um, and they... Um, um, every, every day making more inroads um, in towards it and uh, they'll need to make up their minds we need spices etc well we run out of lentils because when I was young uh, they, they had this bread strike that I had to learn how to make bread so we don't even own porridge we don't even own our own flour anything Everything is all the inks. So, oh, I have to finish it that now. I have done my best. But if we weren't so specific, why did they put gun emplacements in St Kilda during the First World War? And when they came in uh, in 1930, my father saw them coming in. And what was it that they were making? What were they doing? Hmm? Upholstery. Upholstery. And they paid for everything and they were all well dressed. And that's that's what I'm banging on about St Kildren communityism. Because we're not going to get freedom and then going to be shoved about by the unions. But in saying that, as far as the unions are concerned, my father went to House of Lords Three men from Nat Sopa went, and he was one of them. And what they were doing, uh, DC Thompson and John Lane, shutting them out. And they were on strike for a year, and uh, they won their case on that. And uh, they, the, the, the men, we need people that would go on strike, because they are essential things for keeping order in life and that's the police and the medical and the nursing and the ambulance and they cannot be time in motion studies because they're dealing with emergencies it's just absolutely impossible so they can't strike or whatever but all of the unions could strike for them for a day or whatever discuss it and if they agree or whatever um but i'm going to get it all down on on paper but never mind that um, I don't think it should be too hard for you to follow where I'm actually at and uh, whether I care or know whether my dentures are in, my dentures are out, my hair's combed, and I've got my lippy on or whatever, you know. Um, I don't care. I am careless. <laughs>